What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over Google Ads remarketing and I'm going to show you exactly how to create Google Ads remarketing audiences, which are also referred to as data segments, and how to target them in your campaigns. So to get started, our goal in this video is when you go to your tools and settings in your Google Ads account, one of your options is going to be under shared library and it's going to be audience manager. So within audience manager, you're going to have your data segments. So you can see all of my data segments here, and these are different, basically remarketing audiences that I can target within my campaigns. And you can see the size of every single audience over here. So if I'm targeting all users to my website over the last 540 days for a display campaign, it's showing there are 67,000 different people that I can target. So I'm gonna show you how to create these data segments today using Google Analytics and using Google Tag Manager. And I'm also gonna show you how to use YouTube as well so you can target, if you do have a YouTube channel, people who have either subscribed to your channel or watched your videos. So we're gonna get started with Google Analytics and I'm gonna go over how to do this with Google Analytics 4 and Universal Google Analytics. So the first thing you need to do is enable Google Signals with Google Analytics. So this video assumes that you have an active Google Analytics account with the pixel placed on your website and you have an active Google Ads account. So if we come over here to Google Analytics, this is my Google Analytics 4 account, you can see GA4, and then this is my Universal Analytics account, so you can see all website data. So when we start here in Google Analytics 4, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have Google Analytics 4 properly installed on your website. Once you're getting some data about your traffic, what you wanna do is go to your admin. So you're gonna click on admin on the bottom left-hand corner, and you're gonna click on data settings and data collection. You're gonna see an option here that says enable Google signals data collection, and you wanna make sure this is on. And then once you do that, you're all set. The only thing you need to do is click down here and acknowledge the user data collection agreement. So once you've done that, you're all set with Google Analytics 4. Now, if you're using universal Google Analytics, what you wanna do is, again, go to the bottom left-hand corner and click on admin. So you're gonna see the admin link down here in the bottom left-hand corner. And then what you wanna do is click on tracking info and you wanna do the same thing. It's gonna be data collection. So in Google Analytics 4, it's going to be under data settings, data collection. In universal analytics, it's gonna be under tracking info and data collection. And you wanna make sure you turn on data collection for Google signals and go to the bottom and click on save. So that's all you need to do to get started because that's gonna allow you to actually build the remarketing audiences within your Google Analytics accounts. Now, if you're not running Google Analytics at all yet, there is a get started guide right on the Google Analytics help website. And what I'll do is I'll put this link in the video description so I can show you, this will show you how to set up Google Analytics for the first time. And it's basically meant for any type of website that you have. So you need to create a free Google Analytics account to get started. And once you do that, all you need to do is set up analytics on your website. If you're running a WordPress website, there are a ton of different plugins that, you, that can help you out. So there's a lot of information out there about how to install Google Analytics, and it takes about two minutes to do. So it's gonna take you as long to install it as it will to actually get it installed on your website. So it's a very easy software to work with, and it's completely free. So number one, you wanna enable Google Signals with your Google Analytics account. And then from there, what you wanna do is link your Google Ads and your Google Analytics accounts. So there's different ways to do this, but if you go to Google Analytics and we come back to the admin screen again, what you wanna do is scroll down to the bottom, so we're in Google Analytics 4 here, and we're gonna click on Google Ads Links. So right here, you're gonna see, I have my Google Ads account already linked to my Google Analytics 4 account. If you don't, what you wanna do is click on link here and go through the process of linking your accounts. So I use the same Google account for both of my Google Analytics accounts and my Google Ads accounts. So it's very easy to link accounts because all you need to do is come here, click on link. So you're in Google Ads links. You wanna click on the link option here and then you wanna choose Google accounts. And from there, it's gonna select the account that is already linked to your email. So we're gonna close this for now. And the other thing you wanna do is make sure you link your universal analytics account. Now keep in mind, you can choose to just use Google Analytics 4. I've had Universal Analytics installed on my website for several years now, so when Google Analytics 4 came out, I set up both of them on my website. There's really no issue with using both. You're probably better off using one or the other, and Google seems like they're shifting completely towards Google Analytics 4, so you might be best off just using Google Analytics 4 
to build your remarketing audiences, but it's really a matter of preference. There's different ways to do it. So you wanna make sure you have your Google Ads account linked here. And then within Universal Analytics, so again, we're coming right to the admin screen here again. Under product links, you wanna click on Google Ads links. And you can see I have mine linked here. If you don't, click on new link group. Again, if you already have the same email address or the same Google account for both accounts, it should be very easy to link and it should come right up. All you need to do is click on it, click on continue, link, just say all available data and that's it. That's all you need to do and it's gonna link those two accounts together. Now the other thing you can do is within your Google Ads account, go to tools and settings and we're gonna scroll down here to setup and what you wanna do is click on linked accounts. So within your Google Ads account, you can also link Google Analytics 4. You can link Google Analytics, the Universal Analytics Edition. So you can link both of those. I have my Google Search Console account linked and I have my YouTube channel linked here. So all you need to do is when you scroll down, you're gonna see some of these different options here and you just wanna click on details. And when you go into details, it's very easy to link these accounts. So within Google Analytics, if I click on manage and link here, what it's gonna do is pull up your account here and it's gonna give you the option to link that account. Now, one thing you're gonna see here is if you don't see your analytics property below, make sure you have edit access. So you need a minimum of edit access to the Google Analytics property. So linking your accounts might seem like something it's, it's difficult to do, but it's actually very easy. If you have ownership of your Google Analytics account, ownership of your Google Ads account, just go to tools and settings, go to setup, go to your linked accounts, and you're gonna see them all there. And it's the same way with YouTube. So with YouTube, all I did is I have my YouTube channel here for farmhouse goals. I don't really use it. I only have two videos that I've ever uploaded that I've used as an example for video advertising campaigns. But let's just say I wanna link my YouTube channel to my Google Ads account. You go into this linked account section, click on manage and link or details if you haven't set it up yet. It's gonna pull up your channel so you can see right here, it pulls up my channel for Surfside PPC. So I can link this account because I do have ownership to my Surfside PPC channel through this email. So that's basically what you need to do is make sure you have given yourself a high enough level of access and you can do that right through Google Analytics through the account access management. And within there, you can add any email and you wanna make sure you at least have edit access. And then from there, it's very easy to link your accounts. So one and two, enable Google Signals with Google Analytics and make sure your Google Ads and Google Analytics accounts are linked. Now again, I wanna say this one more time, but you can just do this with one version of Google Analytics. I'm just showing you with both because both will still work. So the next thing we need to do is create our audiences within Google Analytics. Those are the people that we're actually gonna be targeting with our advertisements. So we're gonna start here in Google Analytics 4 and from here, what you wanna do is click on configure and within configure, you're gonna click on audiences and you can see here, I have an all users audience. So this is a 30 day audience. So anybody who has visited my website over the last 30 days, there's 19,580 unique people that have visited my website. There's purchasers. So I'm not actually using the purchasers event. So this is not an audience that's gonna populate, but you can also see I have a first visit audience for the last 75 days. So the way that I did that is I clicked on new audience right here. You wanna create a custom audience. You can name your audience up at the top and add a description. And then what you wanna do is click on add new here. And under events, there are some different events that you can actually target. So the conversion on my website is affiliate click. So if I click on affiliate click, then anybody who has actually converted on my website, so you can see over the last 30 days, 1.8 thousand people have clicked on a affiliate link on my website. So what I can do is target anybody who has clicked on one of those links. So the other thing I can do is, let's just use the one I did earlier, Oop, clicked App Store. So we'll scroll down here and let's just say I do page view is one of them that I can do or first visit. So first visit, so that means somebody, it's their first visit to my website and we have a 30 day duration. So doing that, I can just name my audience, click on save, and what it's gonna do is create an audience that looks just like this one, and then once it populates, I can start targeting it with my Google Ads account. So that's Google Analytics 4, and there's a lot of different audiences that you can create. You can do them for basically any event that's happening on your website, people who have visited specific pages. Now, if we come over here to Universal Analytics, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the admin section again, and under the property portion here, so the center column here, if we scroll down, you're gonna see audience definitions and audiences. So we're gonna click on audiences there. 
And you can see here, I have an all users, all users 540 days. So if you click on a new audience, it's gonna say audience source, all website data. So that's basically all the data that's being collected within our Google Analytics account. If we come down and say new users, so anybody who is visiting for the first time, for this, it's a user type, new visitors over the last 30 days. It's saying I have about 6,000 new users over the last seven days. So I have a 30 day membership duration name our audience so what i can do is new visitor 30 days click on next step next is going to be audience destinations so with universal analytics you need to publish this audience to your google ads account and you want to publish it in google analytics so it continues to build so we have it for both of these different destinations we click on publish and now this audience is going to start populating and we can start targeting it within our campaigns so if we come back over here, you're gonna see we enabled Google Signals, we linked our accounts, we created audiences in Google Analytics, and we've published them to Google Ads. Now the next thing we need to do is target data segments with our Google Ads campaigns. So we're gonna come back over here and we're gonna to go to our Google Ads account and let's come to Tools and Settings. Under Shared Library, we're gonna to go to our Audience Manager and within our audience manager, you're going to see our segments. So on the left-hand side, one of the options is segments. And the other thing we can do is if we come down here to your data sources, any place that you've actually linked up any data that you're collecting about people, whether it's your Google ads tag, whether it's Google analytics, universal Google analytics Four, whether it's YouTube, if we come down here, you can see, you can link other accounts here as well. So if we scroll up, you can see that all of these are actively collecting data about people who are visiting my website farmhousegoals.com. So I just did the Google Ads tag yesterday and I just actually enabled Google Signals for Google Analytics 4. So these audiences haven't completely populated yet, but I do have my audiences completely populated for Google Analytics, the universal analytics option. So if we come over here to segments, you're gonna see all of the different audiences that I can target with my campaigns. So this one right here, Farmhouse Sinks, it's people who have visited specific pages on my website. So segment members, visitors of a page with Google Analytics tags, eligibility, search, display, Gmail, not eligible for app installs and app engagement, but it is for hotel and discovery. So all of these are different campaign types that I can use with this specific audience. It's a very small audience, so it's not one I'd really target. What you want is to have at least thousands of people on these segments that you're creating with your data segments. So you can see with search, with display, with YouTube, with Gmail, some of these might be too small to serve. You wanna have at least 1,000 people on your lists. The more you have, the better, because obviously it's gonna help give you a bigger audience to target. So now what we can do is come back over here and we're gonna look at our campaigns real quick. And let's just say we have our search campaign right here. And let's say I wanna make sure I'm targeting anybody who has visited my website with my search campaign. What you're going to do is you're going to come down here on the left hand side and click on audiences. So right now we're at the campaign level with our audiences and we're going to scroll over here and click on edit audience segments. So right now it's saying add to campaign. There's two options here, targeting and observation. If you choose targeting, it's going to narrow the reach of our campaign to the selected segment with the option to adjust bids. So what that means is if I have 160,000 people in my audience, and I choose targeting, it's only going to target that 160,000 people when they search the search terms that I am targeting with my search network campaign. If I choose observation, it's going to target everybody. They don't have to be a part of my remarketing lists. It's going to target everybody who is searching the keywords that I'm targeting. I would highly recommend using observation. You can see it's recommended here. Targeting is really gonna narrow the reach of your campaign unless you have really large audiences because you're only targeting people who are on your lists when they search your targeted keywords rather than giving the option to bid higher or lower to people who are on your lists when they search targeted keywords. So you wanna use observation here for your search network campaigns and then what you can do is come over here to browse. You can see there's a few selected over here, but what you wanna do is come over here to browse, choose your data and similar segments. So it's your data segments and similar segments. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna see website visitors right here. So I can say anybody who has visited my website over the last 540 days, I wanna make sure I'm observing how they're performing. It's also gonna add these other affinity segments, detailed demographics, and in-market segments to my campaign. 
but they're all observation audiences. So we're choosing anybody who's visited my website over the last 540 days and we're gonna click on save. Okay, so now once we have these audience segments added to our search campaign, we're gonna click on show table. And now you're gonna see we have these different audience segments here. They're all the observation targeting setting. So what that means is I can say, okay, anybody who's visited my website over the last 540 days, I wanna do a bid adjustment where I'm increasing my bid by 25%. So a $10 bid will become $12.50 because I know those people have visited my website, they're familiar with my brand, so I wanna target them. With my advertisements, I wanna make sure that they're seeing my advertisements rather than someone who hasn't been to my website before. So we click on save here, and now I'm increasing my bid for anybody who's visited my website. I could do the same thing for homeowners, so I can say, okay, someone who's a homeowner, I'm selling home decor and furniture, they're gonna be more likely to purchase for me, so I wanna increase my bid by 25% for them too. Now what you really wanna do is use the observation setting and you're gonna start getting data about how all of these different audiences are performing for your campaign. So you can see here, I don't have a ton of data here yet, but as you get more clicks and you're spending more and there's people that are in specific in-market audiences or specific remarketing data segments that you've created, you can increase or decrease your bids. So that's how to do this for remarketing lists for search ads is what it used to be referred to, now they are data segments and audience segments for your search ads. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come back out to our all campaign screen, and let's just say we wanna create a new display campaign. So we come over here, we click on the plus sign, we wanna create a new campaign. Let's say we wanna drive sales, so we'll use all the conversions in my account. Just click on continue, so you wanna make sure you have at least one conversion here. And then what we wanna do is we're gonna choose display and we're gonna use a standard display campaign. So you can enter your website here, you can name your campaign. I'm just gonna leave those as is for right now and just click on continue. Okay, so you're gonna have your campaign settings. You wanna choose your location targeting. You wanna choose your language targeting. Then you wanna come down here to budgeting and bidding. Make sure you set your budget, set your bidding strategy. And then the next thing is going to be targeting. So it says optimize targeting is set up for you. So that means that Google Ads is automatically gonna use data from my landing page and my assets, which are my advertisements, to basically try to find people that are gonna be the most likely to convert. Now what I can do is add targeting here and you can see audience segments. So we choose audience segments and this is gonna give us the option of detailed demographics, affinity audiences, but what you wanna do is come down here to how they have interacted with your business. So this is using our data and similar segments. So we're gonna click here you can see website visitors, and let's just use our all users for the last 540 days. So this is gonna target anybody who has visited my website the last 540 days. The total weekly available impressions, these are just estimates, is 140 million using just this audience. So again, if your audience size is a little bit too small, let's just say I just wanna target betting for the last 30 days, you're probably not gonna have many impressions here at all. 1.1 million impressions is not really a ton over the course of a week. So you wanna make sure you have enough impressions so that you can actually get your advertisement out there to people and make sure that they're seeing it, clicking on it, and hopefully converting. So once we do this, we choose this as our audience. We can select done. You can enter multiple remarketing lists here. Again, if I have all users over the last 540 days, that's probably gonna basically include anybody on all of these audiences here. I could do something like the new visitor over the last 30 days. I can do my smart list, which is automatically created by Google Analytics of people that are gonna be more likely to convert, returning users, purchasers. So there's different audiences you can target here, but what you can do is just click on done. You have, we have optimized targeting on, so that allows Google ads to find people beyond my targeting signals. If I just want people who have visited my website to see my ads, you wanna get rid of optimized targeting here and we're just gonna show our ads to the, all users over the last 540 days. Our impressions have dropped to 63 million over the course of a week, so that's available impressions. So that should be enough for us to run our ads, but this is how you target remarketing ads to specific data segments that you've built based on people who have visited your website for display campaigns, and it's gonna be the same exact thing for video campaigns. So when you're creating a video campaign, you're gonna do the same exact thing where you're just coming in here, creating a new campaign, and select the goal, choose your conversion goals, click on continue. You just wanna choose video here, and then you would do the same thing as go to your segments and choose your remarketing audiences. 
So what we want to do next is come up here to tools and settings and we're going to come back over to our shared library, click on audience manager. So the last two things I want to go over is if you click on the plus sign here, you can create new website visitor audiences directly through Google ads, name your audience segment. You want to choose your segment members. So you have different options here, visitors of a page, visitors of a page who also visited another page, people who did not visit another page, specific dates and page with specific tags. You could do page URL contains. So if I want to say, okay, any page URL that contains sinks. So basically anybody who has visited my farmhouse sinks pages. So that page URL contains sinks. I could just do that. I can scroll down here. It's going to say pre-fill segment with people who have matched rules within the past 30 days. So anybody who has visited any syncs page on my website over the last 30 days will automatically be added to this audience membership duration. So you could say the number of days someone stays in this audience segment. You could do something like seven days. The maximum duration is 540 days. So depending on how you want to target people for large websites that get a ton of traffic, you can do membership durations, very small, three, four, five days, and then you're reaching people immediately. So that makes sure you're getting people right as they're in the purchasing process, which something like syncs that would make the most sense. Now I don't get enough traffic. I would have a larger audience than zero here because I do get traffic to those pages. So if you do see zero here, I wouldn't worry too much. Just create the audience. You can start targeting it. If you're not getting impressions, you just want to make sure that you have your accounts properly linked. You have your Google signals enabled through your Google analytics accounts, and then you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is click on the plus sign and I already showed you how I linked my YouTube channel. So if you click on YouTube users, you can see select the YouTube channel of this audience segment. So I have my farmhouse goals, YouTube channel here viewed any video from a channel. It's going to be anybody who viewed any video from my channel. I can pre-fill people with the last 30 days. You can say people stay in this audience for 30 days, 540 days. So what I could do with Surfside PPC is say anybody who watched my Google ads remarketing video, I want to retarget them with some advertisement. I can create an audience based on specific videos. So certain videos here viewed any video as an ad viewed certain videos as an ad subscribers visited a channel page, liked a video, added a video to a playlist, shared a video from a channel. So I could use all of these for Surfside PPC and I'd be able to target people with specific advertisements. So that's one option you have with YouTube. And all you need to do is make sure you have a YouTube channel and you want to make sure your YouTube channel is linked to your Google ads account by going to tools and settings, setup and linked accounts. So that's how to target your YouTube users, anybody who's watched videos, anybody who's subscribed, et cetera, et cetera. So last but not least, I want to go over Google Tag Manager and also how you can just add the Google Ads pixel directly to your website. So what you can do is if we come over here to data sources, one of the options is going to be the Google Ads tag. So you can forego the Google Analytics altogether. So let's just say you're not running Google Analytics. You just have a Google Ads account and a website. So if we come in here to details and we scroll down, you're going to see tag setup at the bottom. So if we click on tag setup, one option you have is to install the tag yourself. You can email the tag. So if you're actually working with somebody else who manages your website, you can email them the tag and they can place it on your website or you can use Google tag manager. So the easiest way to do this is install the tag yourself and take this little code snippet right here. And all you're going to do is copy this code snippet, copy the tag below and paste it in between the header tags on every page of your website. So you want to make sure you're collecting all the data from people on every single page of your website. So if they visit, let's say my farmhouse goals, decorations page, if they go to one of my sinks pages. If they go to a furniture page, basically you're tracking people around your website and then you can use that data to create audiences in Google analytics. Just the way I showed you go to segments, create a new website visitor audience, and just basically set up whether you want to do all visitors, people who have visited specific pages and you can create your audience and target them in your campaigns. Now, if you're using Google tag manager, it might seem kind of complicated, but it's not that difficult. You need to create a Google tag manager account. If you don't have one already, you need to create a new container and you need to publish that container. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add 
our tag to our Google Tag Manager container. So I already have a Google Tag Manager account for Farmhouse Goals. So when you go into your Google Tag Manager account, what you can do is create different tags, triggers, variables. So I'm not gonna go through too much here because it can get pretty complicated if you're not familiar with Google Tag Manager. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you create your tags. And you can see here I have a couple I did yesterday. So Google Ads Conversion Linker and Google Ads Remarketing Tag. So if you go to tags, what you wanna do is click on new. You're gonna see tag configuration here. We're gonna click on it. You're gonna see Google Ads Remarketing. Now the other one is Conversion Linker. So you can do Conversion Linker first. Do that, enable linking on all page URLs. You wanna trigger it on all pages. So this is exactly what it should look like. Name it Conversion Trigger, click on Save. So, or Conversion Linker, excuse me, and click on Save. So we have Conversion Linker we're enable linking on all page URLs. So what that means is Google Ads can actually track where conversions come from and it allows people that if they click from an organic search result, if they click from a Google advertisement, if they click from basically anything, Google Ads can understand where that conversion came from. So you need to make sure you have conversion linker enabled here on all page URLs. You wanna trigger it on all pages, click on save, so that's step one. We're gonna discard changes. I already have my conversion linker tag right here. You'll see it looks exactly like the one I just showed you. So we're gonna click on the X. The next thing we're gonna do is click on new again. You can also go right from your workspace and just click on new tag here. And you're gonna choose a tag and you're gonna click on Google Ads Remarketing. Now you're gonna see conversion linker tag found in container. So if you haven't set that up already, you're gonna to have to set that up it's gonna have a conversion ID here. So for this, you go back to your Google Ads account, we're gonna copy our conversion ID right here. It's under step four. So when you go to your data sources, you click on Google Ads tag, you go down to the instructions, you're gonna see your conversion ID right here. You're gonna copy this number, come back over to Google Tag Manager, enter this right here. Now you don't really need to change anything else. There are some additional advanced settings here, but that's all you need to do in this top portion is Google Ads Remarketing, enter your conversion ID, and we're gonna trigger this on all pages. So what that's gonna allow us to do is collect data from everybody who is visiting our website. It's gonna go across the every single page, and it's essentially going to add the tag that I showed here to our website using Google Tag Manager. So as long as we have Google Tag Manager installed on our website properly, this audience these audiences will always be able to be created because it's gonna just constantly be collecting data for people who are visiting our website. So you're gonna click on save, and then from there, all you need to do is make sure you submit and publish your container. So you wanna submit the changes, so enter a name, enter a description, click on publish, and what that will do is put the Google Ads tag directly on your website. Again, you can also just do this manually, put this piece of code in between your header tags on your website, and you're done with it and you can st start creating your data segments right away. Click on the plus sign, click on website visitors, and you're ready to start using your remarketing audiences. So once you have all these audiences created, you're able to create new campaigns or add them to existing campaigns. Just choose your goal, select the conversion goals you want to actually optimize for, click on continue, choose your campaign type. So let's just say a video campaign, we're gonna drive conversions. And then within your targeting, all you need to do is make sure you go down to your data segments and you're gonna be able to target people who have visited your website. So we scroll down here, okay, and you can see people who you wanna reach. So right now our weekly estimates for available impressions, 10 billion plus, choose an audience segment. So what you can do is use your data. So just come right here, we'll just choose all users 540 days because that's when I keep choosing. And then what we can do is target people who have visited our website over the last 540 days. Now, depending on your industry, what you're selling, you might wanna reach people within seven days, within 30 days. For something like farmhouse goals, if I know someone is living in a farmhouse style home, then all I need to do is keep them collected on my remarketing list and I can target them whenever I want to. So my weekly available impressions right now, 240 million. And it's really that simple, and you can combine these with other in-market segments or any custom audiences you've created. But I really just wanted to focus on Google Ads remarketing, and this should help you get started with how to do it using Google Analytics 
and also using Google Tag Manager. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.